Ahead of the 2023 general election in Nigeria, the main opposition party, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, is beginning to harmonize its ideology both within and across party lines. Yesterday in London, the River State Governor, Yesum Wike, met separately with former President Olusha Gmobasanjo, presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atiku Abubakar, and his Labour Party counterpart, Peter Obi. The meetings yesterday were part of the consideration of the various options before Wike and his allies. However, no official pronouncement on the reason for the meetings or their outcome uh, have come to the fore. But recent events showed that those meetings might be related to the much anticipated alignments and realignments before the 2023 elections, even though Wike and friends who seem to have limited options. But for the first time, the meeting between the PDP presidential candidate and the Wiki camp in the party ended with smiles. Joining us on the show from our Abuja studio on the continuing quest to resolve the internal wrangling in the PDP is Michael Mary, spokesperson for Atiku Mandate Group and Senator Lee Meba, former chairman of the Senate Committee on Petroleum Resources in the 5th and 6th Senate. Gentlemen, welcome to the morning show. Michael Mary, good to see you. Really good to see you. And uh, Senator uh, good to Member. See you again. Yeah, good Senator morning. Member, let me just say, okay, finally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good morning. Anyway, very quickly, let me ask. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> let me ask uh, both of you. Um, there have been many speculations about the meetings in London, particularly the final meeting between. Um, presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar and the Wiki camp, as it is said, uh, described. Um, but you are, Mike, in charge of the Atiku Mandate Group, uh, Senator member. You are also very actively involved in both the Mandate Group and uh, everything else within the uh, uh, PDP. Do you think that this meeting uh, in London has finally put to rest the crisis within the PDP with regard to the presidential race, the battle over whether Iyocha you should go or not, and whether or not uh, the presidential candidate, if he wins, should do only one term. Let me start with you, uh, Senator Member. Well, I, I thank you very much, uh, my brother, and good morning. I, I think I want to put a, a perspective in place. Uh, we are not in Article Mandate Group. We belong to an organization called the National Mandate Group, which is duly registered in Nigeria to promote good governance and, and prepare youth for leadership. And Mike here is the director of communication in the National Mandate Group. The National Mandate Group has been in existence since 2014, and our role, our job is to promote good governance and so that is the perspective when the, about your question, you know reconciliation is a process that is enduring, that is between the candidate and the aggrieved after the presidential primaries. And so you saw it on, on TV, you saw pictures like we saw yesterday too, as uh, a party man, I can't preempt what they have discussed. I have not spoken to neither party in the discussion about how they discuss what they discuss and the way forward, but I believe that they know all of them. The both parties know the importance of the season, the period, we are very close to election and the need to, to sacrifice personal interests and put up the national interest and be patriotic enough to resolve their differences. That's all I can say. Okay, uh, Mike or Mary, uh, maybe you take it off from where Senator started. Uh, you know, the National Mandate Group. And talk to us about the National Mandate Group. The producers thought it was Atiku uh, Mandate Group. That was in my era. <laughs> that came from the producers. The National Mandate Group. Uh, Please go ahead. That's okay. I think it's more for the public to understand than for you. Uh, essentially, um, the National Mandate Group believes that every vote matter, every Nigerian vote matter, whether they are voting for PDP 
or APC or whatever party. So what it intends to do as a group of Nigerian patriots is to mobilize all votes and voters across the country to support a candidate whose values, whose vision, whose intention for this country tallies with the yearnings of majority of the people. And that is what it has been doing for the past eight years or so, as was mentioned. And the National Monday Group believes that by the examples it will set, by the activities it will undertake, Nigerians will realize that not every, that there is still some few good uh, uh, principles, few good uh, hands that are willing, ready to toil to make it better and therefore vote the right choice because the messaging, the ideas and the capacity for involvement and the space actually for involvement is available to one and all, wherever they may be. Okay, but I, I wanted a comment also on the meeting in London. And is it not true that the National Mandate Group is a support group for uh, Atiku Abubakar of the PDP? You want to clarify that too? Of course, the National Mandate Group yeah, the National Mandate Group supports the PDP and therefore would support the candidates of the PDP in all elections. And Atiku happens to be the flag bearer of the PDP and he has uh, his programs tally with the vision or the ideals of the founding fathers of BDP and the vision for this country. Uh, and more so that he has been around and he has tried his hands in a few more fields and therefore given the opportunity to serve, we will have to work for him. That's our party. That's the party that we believe can do the right things in saving the country from the current state of confusion and uh, seeming directionless. Uh, on the meeting in, in London, like I said, every vote matter. And so if uh, uh, you know, meetings are holding in London and we are not left out, the candidates of the party, people from the party are also part of that meeting, I think it's a good thing to, to behold for our democracy. And I see uh, that the meeting in London will eventually uh, give birth to something very meaningful, not just for the party, but for the nation. Okay, let me start with Senator Mayber. Um, yes, clearly both of you are still are very staunch members of the uh, PDP. So the mandate we are talking about really certainly not uh, mobilizing for any other person, but your party flag bearer. If uh, I don't think there's any need for further clarification on that. But Senator Maber, now you were one of the, reportedly, one of the PDP elders in River State who met with Atiku some time ago. Uh, you were said to be that the governor of River State was not happy with some of you. But my question is, what is the state of the PDP in River State? Uh, because the governor has boasted that once he speaks, River people listen. And if the governor perhaps is not uh, placated and he decides to work with other people in other political parties, as has been reported uh, widely yesterday, is the PDP not finished in River State uh, if that were to happen? Well, my, my answer to this question is, oh, you, you see, I don't want to, our activities as the National Monday Group is not localized. We have coordinators, caucus members in all the 36 states of the country and also in all the, um, in all the 774 local government areas across the country and all the 176,000 uh, voting units across the country. Uh, the PDP is a solid party. I have been a member of the PDP since 1998. I have seen everything in PDP. I have seen trying time. I have seen better time. And I've also seen challenging times like this. But my resolve is that as a party that have come to stay, we've been in government for, for many years, uh, out of government for several years, and now find the bitterness of being out of government and, you know, seeing the gains of the government initiated in 1999 uh, by the PDP being washed away 
by the current administration. That alone, coming back to government to rescue Nigeria, make it very, very important that anybody's anger, like I say in my opening statement, this is the time for patriotism. This is the time to show patriotism. This is the time to, to show that we are nationalists. Uh, this is the time to sacrifice personal interest for the, for the general good of the country. And so whatever is the situation in the PDP in River State, the reconciliation going on will affect everybody positively. And so I believe that nothing to jump the gun. Uh, you, are, you know that a negotiation team, a reconciliation team, were also in protocol last Friday and they met and discussed. I'm not a member. I have not had the report. Again, yesterday in London, another meeting, reconciliation in December. So what I believe is that everybody believe because he who does not want peace will not go to the negotiating table. So I believe that being on the negotiating table, everybody believes that the best way to go about this whole thing is to keep peace and focus on the big picture. The big picture is to rescue Nigeria and, you know, uh, assist this APC government to go home, encourage them to go home because they have failed, they have reversed every gain this country has ever made. And that is why, how we tell you, Ruben, uh, when we talk about uh, the National Mandate Group, we are not just jumping to support a candidate. If the, if the, the agenda of the candidate of the People's Democratic Party is not good enough, we will not come out because our role is to promote good governance. And so comparing this to what we have from 1999, make us sit up and review this candidate. We come to talk when we have seen the activities and the agenda of all the presidential candidates and all the parties and come to the reality that the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Alaji Atiku Abubakar, represents our core value, the core value of turning the country around. And we check who is the man Atiku Abubakar. The man Atiku Abubakar come to limelight in 1999 Yes, he has been in politics since 1992. I saw him in the SDP. I saw what he said about Nigeria in, in 1992 in Jos. And then finally, he got his way into the, into the presidency in 1999. What were his work? This, uh, the work were separated. Obasanjo Atiku administration was one that was coming out of where Nigeria was like a pariah nation. Uh, the military have demolished Nigeria. Nigeria was nothing left of a country that is going for extinction. So the job were divided. Obasanjo was virtually on the air, going everywhere. He, he visited almost every country in the world to sell back Nigeria, to reinvent Nigeria and sell Nigeria to the rest of the world. At home front, Atiku was the chairman of the Economic Reform Committee. And so what did he do? They presided over so many things and brought about solid reforms. Like, for instance, the social media. Even as we talk now, the social media was introduced by that economic team. All right. I mean, uh, you both sound optimistic about this reconciliation effort, even though uh, you're not able to give us any information about the meetings because you say you are not part of it. But let me ask both of you, how concerned are you about uh, your efforts to rally uh, support for your candidate. How concerned are you that those efforts may be in jeopardy, considering uh, the internal wranglings and the PDP may be going into the elections a divided house? Well, I, 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 I obviously believe, like I told you, this, there is no really dispute in PDP. What we have is disagreement that is known to be associated with every political movement. It's disagreement, and the disagreement are what is being ironed at now. The PDP is not a divided house per se. Every party, every, every concerned member of the party is satisfied with the fact that the PDP need to go to the election and win to rescue Nigeria. There is no party in, the, in this negotiation that is not aware that the politics is more important to rescue Nigeria. Like 
Some parties have said the APC is cancerous. The PDP is malaria. So we have to cure this malaria instead of falling into the cancerous state of sickness. And so I am very concerned. But I was telling you about what Nigeria wants now. You look at Malaysia some years ago. Uh, the president, the, the president of Prime Minister did a lot of work and retired. Two years ago, they came back to call him, come and complete the work he started at 90. Article went into the presidency in 1999, a young man in his 50s, and then did all this reform. Like I was talking about the introduction of the social media, which is why we are sitting here. The social media was introduced by the team. They introduced the, the National uh, Communication Commission, which is the brainchild of all the communication and all the reform we have seen, the GSM, everything, the banking, everything. So some people today who are 20 something years old or even 30, they would not believe that it was article commission or committee, a reform committee that did all this work. Before 1999, there was nothing called bank card. Credit card. Well, well, you're correct. They, no, they, not, they, they may not know, but <laughs> Mr. O'Meary, I mean, what they know now is that the presidential candidate of the party and the governor from the party in River States at loggerheads. So uh, your mandate to rally round, how, how optimistic are you? Well, very... First and foremost, the party is a democratic party and has room for uh, disagreements and discussions. So what is happening now is to try to understand each other within the context of a party that is not only desirous of winning election, but mobilizing and galvanizing everybody within the system, within Nigeria, to understand its own place, unique place, in contributing to the development and rescuing of this country from wherever it has been taken to in the last couple of years. You see, and, and that is why the National Mandate Group is coming from three directions. First, uh, we are talking of national uh, or inclusiveness, national integration and unity. How we can in make sure that Nigerians begin to see themselves as one, not begin to do, uh, embark on a voyage of ethnic profiling and religious profiling and so forth and so on. That has not been the hallmark of the PDP. Throughout its time uh, in government, you didn't hear this kind of comments. And then the second is to ensure that we give value to our causes. We, create, we, you know, we promote the uh, national orientation in the manner that Nigerians begin to respect dignity, I mean, to have dignity in uh, labor, they should respect our national values, they should look at the core focus of the nation as the number one um, yeah, issue, you know. And thirdly, to look at sectoral uh, deficits in, in, in uh, agriculture, in security, and so forth and so on. So these are the places, these are the issues that we have seen widely as affecting Nigeria at the moment, and we need to work towards that to get Nigerians back together. This represents a core value or pillar of PDP, and we have seen that any, um, I mean, all the candidates of the PDP have aligned to these key issues, and therefore factor, uh, fashion their programs and vision and manifesto and plans for the nation around these areas. So if that be the case, why don't you work for it? Because we want a good Nigeria. It didn't matter who won the election, what we want is a good Nigeria. And if we see that the PDP and its flat platform and candidates have the capacity to work around these values in order to rescue our country, we will go for it. Okay, Michael Mary and uh, Senator Member. The big issue in the PDP has been the uh, continued uh, presence of Senator Yochi Ayu as chairman of the PDP. Uh, apart from uh, the wiki camp, there are other people also saying, look, in line with the principle of equity, fairness, justice, and diversity in section 73C of the PDP constitution, Yochi Ayu must, go, uh, must step down and a chairman of the party should come from the South. What do you think of this? Particularly now that uh, the uh, Senator uh, has convened a meeting of the National Working Committee and he has been uh, you know, quoted as saying he would deliver 25 states 
at the gubernatorial level uh, to the PDP and majority of the seats in the National Assembly. That's not a man who wants to go, but there are people within the party who are still insisting that he must go. What do you think? Who will go first? Michael Mary, please. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you, Ruben. You see, the PDP, fortunately I'm good enough, uh, Senator Ayu himself, a respected party man, one of the last uh, surviving founders of the party, has said himself that he will quit at the right time, especially when the, the, you know, the, uh, the uh, arrangements, the zona or uh, you know, sharing formula tilts in favor of one section or the other of the country. But he, don't forget, we are also looking at a Nigeria where we don't really care about which zone or which tribe or which religion. We are looking at a Nigeria that produces its best to serve it. Now, since it, is a, it was a party decision, let the party talk, let the party take the position that it should do, that is good for, for, the, for, the, uh, you know, for, for, for the nation. And that is what they are doing. They are talking. Let me tell you, Ruben, every member of the PDP thinks and believes that, I mean, should think and believe that he should deliver at least 25 states of this country to the party. So if Ayu thinks that way, it is not, uh, it is not something uh, you know, that we should go to, 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 to party about. It's something that every member of the party should feel responsible to delivering for the nation to survive going forward. So what is happening would be resolved within the context of the party when all chips are put on the table and everyone understands that we need to have a party first, a country first, a party, and then the success that we, we, we desire. So what I see in the coming days is a, a, you know, is a convergence of views and ideas from you, the, the last time you had the, uh, the, the, the chairman of the board of trustees also made comments on that. So it is not as if the party itself and its members, especially top echelon of the party, is not aware of what should be done. And since it is aware of what should be done, these discussions taking place will give us the roadmap. We are optimistic it will work. Okay, let me come in here again. Um, try as you may have done, uh, clearly this national mandate group is working for the PDP. And I think you have, yes, you have said as much. Um, now, apart from the internal disagreement, you call it, or crisis within the PDP right now, there are other political headwinds uh, you have to deal with. If your candidate, Atiku Abubakar, is to emerge in 2023 as the next president, one, the desire that the next president ought to have should come from the South, and we have Southern candidates. I don't know how you are dealing with that as you move along. The Southeast, which used to be a stronghold of the PDP, desire that a president of Igbo extraction sh should be the next president, and Peter B. left. Is, is uh, gathering momentum in the Labour Party. And of course, um, the running mate of APC is from the Northeast. And um, it's making waves also. So how are you dealing with these headwinds as you mobilize? Because that's what you seem to be doing for your preferred candidate, Atiku Abubakar. How do you deal with all these headwinds? Well, I, I, I will be surprised that uh, Peter Obi of the Labour Party is running as an Igbo candidate. Then if he is, I'll be looking for an Alago candidate from my village in Nasarawa State to also be uh, running for president so that I can not just run for him president, but as such, not that he presenting himself. Group. As an so Igbo candidate, but the South uh, uh, so, so what we voters, so which used to be your PDP stronghold, they see somebody <laughs> they can now maybe put their votes on. It's not Peter B. seen himself as well, but the no, citizens they, they of will, the, the South next East. Vote, they know, yes. The next voting. Yes. Yes. Yes, you see, that is why the National Mandate Group is doing what it's doing to make citizens realize that we should run away from this criteria of leadership selection that has cocooned us within the parameters of zone, region, religion, and so forth and so on. We are trying to make people realize that, look, it is about good governance, it's about delivery of service. So whether you are 
uh, an alago man or you are uh, uh, wherever you are so long as you are nigerian people blooded with all the capa- criteria uh, you know for leadership uh, not just competence because every one of us is competent and every one of us is eligible as far as the nigerian constitution is concerned but we are talking about suitability for leadership now and i'm not saying all of those other candidates are not suitable who are not eligible they are eligible to contest but we are looking at those who are suitable for the moment and so if Atiku is coming as a stabilizer, a unifier, why not? Uh, we are not saying Peter Obi does not have his own quali- kind of qualities that may be good for Nigeria in different phases. We are not saying so. But we are against the fact that we are you know, promoting these divisions of ethnicity, Igbo, Yoruba, and so forth and so on. This is detestable. It is not of Nigeria. It's not, it shouldn't be of Nigeria in this century. So, uh, as far as the PDP is concerned, we shall remain focused and continue to promote the values that we think would rescue this country, not about where somebody comes from or where Shatima comes from. These are not in our, diction, in our dictionary and we don't even use that. They are not headwinds at all because whether we, we like it or not, there are, there, there are issues in the campaign, the political campaign, that we need to convince people to talk to people and show proof and reason why they should work with us. So, that is what we are doing. And we are not going to look at those as the major issues. We are looking at how to make this country great again. These are the issues. Okay, Adesua. Okay. Uh, let, let me ask you. Uh, we've seen former President Olusha Gombasanjo in some of his meetings. Uh, yesterday, he was also meeting with presidential candidate of um, Labour Party. And that would not be the first time he's meeting with him. In fact, there are reports and insinuations that the former president is more inclined towards a Peter Obi emerging as the next president. As a mandate group, uh, do you have the support? Have you been able to rally the support of former President Olusha Gombasanjo? And how critical is he? Uh, how critical is it to, to have him in your corner? Uh, let me have you, uh, Senator Lee, respond to that. Yeah, yeah number, number one, I have to make a comment about uh, 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 Ruben asking about uh, the, con- the, the condition that uh, uh, you must go in the discussions. Number one, PDP has been passing through this type of situation in the past, you know, even when Ali was, uh, when Ali was uh, chairman and the margins of Yaradua. Yes, it is, it is common convention in our party, the candidate and the, the, the president and the chairman cannot come from the same zone. When Yaradua emerged as the president of Nigeria, Ali resigned and there was reshufflement. Because this reshufflement even called for many conventions. And if you ask me, any sincere party man who wants the party to win election will be, will be demanding for a convention at this time, in the middle of election, my, my answer will be no. So, in as that is going on, the party have internal mechanism to resolve this, but the common convention is the president and the, and the, and the, and the, and the chairman cannot come from the same zone. Now, settle for that. Talking about the quest for certain presidents, our every party have is style at the convention. APC zone eight presidential candidate to the to the south to the south. PDP through his own open and a candidate emerge and is Atiku Abubakar. So that convention of south or north, of course, <laughs> the next if Atiku wins, it, it falls back on the PDP that he has become president, and the next time there will be this, you know, agitation. Move south, move south. But that is not where Nigeria needs to be now. Nigeria now is looking at who is credible enough to be president. Uh, as you asked about the support from uh, Olusegun Obasanjo. I will tell you. I am a, have been a close ally of Obasanjo. I worked with him. I was in the Senate when he was president as well as at Atiku. I 
can make bold to say that right now, all the reforms, all the reforms that I was trying to enumerate between, uh, within the Olusa Gono Basanjo and Atiku administration that have been derailed, who is better fit to fix and continue those reforms? Of course, it's Atiku. And so without being, without being selfish, we as the National Mandate Group conducted a serious research on everything that has happened between 1999 and now. Look at everything that has happened in progression of those gains that were made, like the banking reforms, like the communication reforms, like everything, like even in the health sector, everything has been derailed. One man have what it takes to, kick, re, to reinvent those reforms, kickstart it, and make the country be on the path of growth. So I am very sure, we are very confident that Atiku Abubakar have those qualities. Because he started it, he formed a team. And the team, I can tell you, I was, I was telling you, between 19, before 1999, we were using Thomas Cook. You will not know what is Thomas Cook to go overseas because there was no Forex. You have to buy Thomas Cook in Naira. When you go to London, you show them, this is my Thomas Cook. They give you the money. We were like in the, part, we were like in the third age. So now those reforms, are they making good waves? Yes. The credit card, the debit card were introduced to solve that problem. Nigeria is not a country where you can just wire money to anywhere in the world. Does he have my president, Olusegun Ambassador, in his corner? What, what I'm trying to, to tell you is that politics, Obasanjo is an individual. For the fact that they work together, does not automatically put a pin on him. Pin Atiku. No. It's also revealed the situation. Yes, he's a human being, he's from the South. He talked about certain president, but it, at the moment, at the moment, the certain president is not an issue now. The issue now is how do we rescue Nigeria from where it is now? Nigeria is finished. Look at a friend of mine wanted to go overseas last week. You have to go to Togo to board the plane. The planes are not coming here. So we are back to the Paria nation where we were in 1998. So Nigeria needs that rescue. So he doesn't need anybody to tell me that this is the way we should go because we're in trouble. A desperate situation requires desperate solution. And the desperate solution is Atiku Abubakar. And he's set to go. He's set to take on Nigeria right now. He's set to renew Nigeria. He's set to make Nigeria work again. We have, we have developed what we call the Atiku Quick Fix, which is in tandem with his five-point agenda. The Atiku Quick Fix in food security, the Atiku Quick Fix in the economy, in, in, uh, social, in security, in uh, every, every round part of it. For instance, you know there is no food in this country. You know there is no food in this country, and because there is no food in this country, what is a quick fix? Get food on the table for Nigerians. We are talking about food subsidy. Food subsidy. What a food subsidy? So part of the article quick fix is to get food on the table for Nigerians. When we left the war, I was very small during the war, but when we left the war, when Nigeria returned from war, and there was now the, the post-war management uh, season, Nigeria imported so much what they call essential commodity to doubt tension. Nigeria is coming from what? This APC government now is more than war. It's everybody have lost his farm. Everybody have lost his bank account. Children are back from school. They cannot go to school. So what are we going to do? Get, get food on the table for Nigerians. Get, this, get the children back to school. Get the hospital working again. Get, the, get industries working so that we can have a lot of cottage industries to stimulate local supply, to stimulate you know, national production and kickstart the process again and make Nigeria work again. So it doesn't require who is supporting who, but the collective interest of Nigeria, we have conducted a very serious, very serious survey across the 176,800 voting units across the country. And everybody is aligning himself with the article quick fix, the article uh, five point agenda. So that is the way Nigerians want to go. And every, anybody who is not a part of it is trying to avoid, is trying to avoid the masses. The masses are moving to Atiku. So anybody who is not moving to Atiku is moving against the masses.
Okay, yeah. okay, Senator Member. Thank you very much, Senator Member. Thank you very much, uh, Mike uh, Umeri, for joining us on the uh, morning show. Senator Member, the campaigns will start very soon. I see you're already, uh, you know. Anyway, thank you very much for joining us.